Hi everybody, welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna talk about Joy Division, New Order and their bass player Peter Hook. I had a huge amount of requests to make a video about Peter Hook and at the beginning I couldn't tell why. As a matter of fact, I was never impressed by any New Order bass line. I put on Blue Monday trying to look for some reason behind his popularity, but I couldn't find anything interesting to say about that typical octave kind of dance bass line. Till I found out that's not the bass. Peter Hook is best known as the bassist and co-founder of English rock band Joy Division and New Order. He got into bass guitar after seeing the Sex Pistols. He and future Joy Division guitar player Bernard Sumner decided to form a band and Sumner told Hook to go get a bass. Borrowing 35 pounds from his mother, Hook went in search of a bass, having no idea about what a bass guitar was or did. The guy in the shop asked him which bass he wanted and that stumped Peter who just kept saying he wanted a bass guitar. When the clerk grabbed the nearest bass, Hook said it wouldn't do because there was only four strings. So the guy had to break in the news. No son, basses only have four. A few years later, on Joy Division's two albums before the tragic death of their singer Ian Curtis, Hook invented a style of bass playing that continues to inspire to this day, with his post-punk grit sitting at the very forefront of the mix. So let's move on and see what makes Peter Hook such a memorable player. Number 1. The higher part of the neck. Hook famously developed his high bass lines when he started playing with Joy Division. Because the amp he had was so poor, he had to play that high to be able to hear what he was doing, as guitar player Sumner was so loud. Hook often used the bass as a lead instrument, playing melodies on the high strings with a signature heavy chorus effect. In New Order, he would get into it more and more, leaving the actual bass lines to keyboards or synthesizers. Not only he mainly used the upper part of the neck, but he would rely on the first and second string only to provide an even brighter and cutting through sound. Most of the action in Joy Division and New Order happens in this tiny area of the neck. You know that Blue Monday part I was talking about? The bass line is actually played by the keyboard, while the bass guitar provides a very trebly sound, mostly like a clean guitar. That's the, uh, the famous line of Blue Monday that I stole from Ennio Morricone. Number 2. Double string pedal tone. With New Order's ever increasing use of synthesized bass, Hook's bass playing became even more melodic and rhythmic and took advantage of the open D string that can act as a pedal tone while you move up and down on the G string. <laughs> D and G can actually play together on a bass and produce a bright and distinguishable sound. Number 3. Chords. The same area of the neck can be used also to play power chords, providing a guitar style result that really gives a unique nuance to the music of Joy Division and New Order. By playing the two notes separately, you get a root and fifth arpeggio, also largely used. Not sounding much like a bass guitar, right? This type of playing was encouraged by Joy Division singer Ian Curtis, but guitar player Bernard Sumner wasn't a fan and during one of their early rehearsal sessions asked Peter if he could just follow the route. Peter famously answered, no, how about you fucking follow me? Number 4. Play around the vocal melody. 
After hearing Peter's iconic bass riff for Love Will Tear Us Apart, singer Ian Curtis decided to use a similar melody for his vocal part. It worked out so well that Peter decided that playing around the vocal melody should become one of his trademark moves. Other defining traits of the style of Peter Hook are the use of the natural minor scale, which he used to write most of his parts, and the old down picking policy he had on fastest numbers, where the bass had to provide a more solid element to keep the rhythm grounded. We can also say that repetition played a huge role in the music of Joy Division and New Order, as most of Peter's iconic bass lines are just made out of 4 or 8 bars looped from beginning to end. He also used octave runs at times, such in the main riff of A Means to an End. Peter used a number of bass guitars, including a Gibson EB-1, a Honda Rickenbacker copy, and most importantly the Shergold Marathon 6-string bass, which he used with later Joy Division and New Order. Switching to a 6-string bass gave Peter the ability to play even more chords, for example on Passover. He also made a large use of effects such as chorus and delay, which was quite common for the time. His rig and gear have been analyzed already, so I'm gonna leave them out of this video. The most important thing about Peter Hook is his will to go in a different direction from the bands of the era. He was inspired to play bass by punk icon Sid Vicious, a guy that apparently couldn't play bass, and this attitude led him to develop his own style, that is still relevant more than 40 years after Joy Division came out. His technical abilities might be limited, but his unique approach to the bass made him an influential and respected bass player to this day. Thank you very much for watching, please follow me on Instagram, don't forget to subscribe and leave us a like.